Should we be afraid of AI? Afraid of robots terminating the human race? Afraid of our daily devices slowly gaining consciousness? Okay, maybe these scenarios sound very far-fetched. But according to estimates by Oxford Economics, 47% of all jobs across the United States are at risk of becoming automated. And Elon Musk thinks we're all doomed. Is this the beginning of the singularity? Do you know what the singularity is? We'll explain that in a bit. Artificial intelligence has been around for quite some time now. And even when it wasn't around, it was making guest appearances in our favorite sci-fi shows and movies. Since the dawn of technology, humans have wondered, could we create a machine that works like, or even better than, us? The answer to this question seems to be a resounding yes. Machine learning is happening all around us. Tablets, cell phones, computers, not to mention YouTube, the platform you're watching this video on right now. They're all rigged with it. There are many questions that arise when we think of AI. How far are we from going from an R2-D2 to a C-3PO? Or maybe you believe a Terminator-esque scenario is more likely? How possible is it to create a machine with a conscience? Will the rise of AI be the beginning of the end for humans? And how will the evolution of AI actually affect our day-to-day -day lives? You're watching Explore Mode, and today we're diving into the rise of artificial intelligence. Before we get into answering these questions, we need to understand the origins of AI and how it works. So, for that purpose, let's put artificial intelligence into perspective. How long has it been around? Take a look at this timeline. In ancient Greek mythology, yes, that far back, the idea of an anthropomorphized machine came in the form of Talos, a giant bronze automaton made to protect Europa, the mother of King Minos. In 1921, the word robot was used for the first time in a sci-fi play by Czech writer Karl Kapek. The play was called RUR, for Rosam's Universal Robots, and it's all about how androids rebel against the human race, eventually causing human extinction. A plot that has since been recycled in many dystopian movies and literature today. By the 1950s, a young man by the name of Alan Turing, the same man who helped crack the German's Enigma code used during World War II, decided he wanted to know whether or not these myths and sci-fi stories could be true. In a paper written by him, published that same year, he posed a question. Can machines think? In order to figure this out, he developed the Turing test. Think about the Turing test as an anonymous chat room. A judge, human of course, would exchange messages with a group of individuals, one of which was a machine. If the machine managed to trick the human judge into thinking it was conversing with another human, it had passed the test. So far, only a few AI machines have been able to trick human judges. Among them are Eliza, a natural language processing computer programmed with a script of a therapist created in the 1960s by a German-American computer scientist, Joseph Weizenbaum. In 1972, psychiatrist Kenneth Colby created Parry, a bot meant to imitate the personality of a person with paranoid schizophrenia. Then in 2014 came Eugene Gustman, a bot programmed to respond like a 13-year-old boy from Ukraine. All these bots have passed variations of the Turing test, but we're still a long way from holding conversations with an AI. If you don't believe us, just try striking up a conversation with Siri. A mini-explore fact here. The term artificial intelligence was first coined by John McCarthy, an American computer and cognitive scientist, during a workshop at Dartmouth. But having a conversation with a human is not the only measurement of the capacity of an AI machine. There are two key elements in artificial intelligence, neural networks and machine learning. Neural networks draw inspiration from one of the most sophisticated machines on Earth, the human brain. Here's an Express Explore explanation on them. Start the clock. Disclaimer. We know neural networks are way more complicated than what we're about to explain, but we're trying to keep it simple, okay? Okay, let's go. Like brains, neural networks are made of artificial neurons called units. These units are arranged into layers. Information that enters the input units is interpreted by the hidden units and then comes out through the output units. During this process, the units create connections in between them, which are usually represented as these lines. Each connection is represented by a number, known as a weight. 
weights can be positive or negative. Positive connections trigger other units, negative ones inhibit others. Okay, so how do these neural networks enable machine learning? Just like humans do, through feedback. Neural networks have an end output they have to produce. Say the machine is learning to identify cats in pictures. In this case, the output needs to be a number that represents pictures with cats in them. But you can't just feed the input units a photo of a cat and expect it to know. Simple neural networks respond to yes or no questions. So let's say there are four input units and we assign each of them the following questions. Does it have fur? Does it have pointy ears? Does it have whiskers? Does it have claws? Granted, we could be asking this about any other animal, but you get the gist. As the queries run through the hidden units, the network will look for a numerical output that says, yes, this is a cat, and learn that the no's mean it needs to work harder. After it goes through the output, it compares its answers to the correct output. Every time it gets it wrong, it adjusts, learns, and becomes better at identifying cats in this case. And then, presto, the machine is now teaching itself. Today, AI systems power self-driving cars. They answer our questions through voice recognition systems and unlock our phones with face recognition technology. But there are levels to AI. Fortunately, futurism helped us separate it into four categories that fall in different areas of the reactive or self-aware spectrum. The first type is reactive AI. As its name suggests, it's the type that reacts to whatever stimuli it is trained to react to. Think AlphaGo the Google AI that managed to beat the human Go champion. The second type is the one that possesses limited memory. Think Tesla cars. They store a certain amount of data that then determines their future responses. Type three and four is when things get tricky. Type three refers to AI that is trained to recognize and interact with human emotions and motivation. Think C-3PO from Star Wars or TARS from Interstellar. Type 4 is AI that has reached a self-aware state. It understands what it is. It has abstract thoughts. It's sentient. Think Ava from Ex Machina. Now for the big questions. Will we ever get to type 4? Will technology take over and eradicate the human race? There's actually a name for this hypothetical scenario. Technological singularity. Singularity itself is a term from physics used to describe a moment in time or space, usually a black hole, where the laws of physics, space, and time as understood by humans stop making sense. So a technological singularity would be a time where technology stops making sense to humans, a time where we will lose control of the technology we created. Although this possibility has been thoroughly milked by Hollywood, are we really close to it? Well. It depends on who you ask. Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk thinks we're more or less doomed. You'd think that the man behind the world's biggest manufacturer of self-driving cars would be more enthusiastic about the future of AI. But Musk believes there's only a 5 to 10% probability that AI will be safe for humans. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie Nobody where listened. the robots are going to take over and you're freaking me out. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. Louis Rosenberg, CEO of Unanimous AI, agrees. His prediction is that AI will exceed human intelligence by 2030. In a 2018 Futurism article on Singularity, Rosenberg states that assuming sentient AI will be on our side and put human interest first is, quote, absurdly naive. Rosenberg goes on to say, to assume that it won't put its interests first, putting our very existence at risk, is to ignore what we humans have done to every other creature on Earth. Then there's scientists like Raja Chatilla, Chair of the IEEE Global Initiative for Ethical Considerations in AI and Autonomous Systems and Director of the Institute of Intelligence Systems and Robotics at Pierre and Marie Curie University. In the same article, Chatilla explains that to him, the singularity is a matter of belief, not science. He thinks a machine's increased ability to compute cannot be compared with the way a human brain thinks. So as you can see, it's a slippery slope and one where experts on the field disagree. 
But the singularity, although some predict it to just be two decades away, is still a hypothetical that seems far-fetched to some. What's not too far-fetched is the idea that some AI in the present could be taking over human jobs, which leads us to our next question. How is and how will the evolution of AI actually affect our day-to-day -day lives? And what workers in which industries should be worried? Well, as we mentioned before, AI is already present in our daily lives. Ride-sharing apps like Uber and Lyft use machine learning systems to determine things like the best route to your destination, the amount of time you'll have to wait for your ride to come, the price for your ride, etc. Same thing goes for meal delivery apps like Uber Eats. In 2019, Google began looking into building a self-driving car that would use machine learning to teach itself how to properly navigate city streets while at the same time keeping the humans in the car and on the road safe. Today, the project has gone independent and renamed themselves Waymo. In 2018, Waymo launched the first driverless ride-hailing app in Phoenix, Arizona called Waymo One. Things that used to require human interaction, such as banking, have also become more and more digitalized. Ever had to send a signed document through an app or enter your signature on an app? Well, artificial intelligence and optical character recognition are in charge of identifying your signature. This is great in terms of convenience. We no longer have to think about what happens once we tap away on our phones. AI takes care of it all. It's not so great for people who are in jobs that can be easily AI'd. We're talking about bookkeepers, clerks, receptionists, retailers, and telemarketing agents. These are all jobs that will be slowly replaced as AI continues to evolve. It seems to be that we're at the brink of a second industrial revolution, as AI is also taking over the manufacturing industry. But what has enabled this exponential growth of AI in our lives? Let's jump into an Express Explorer explanation. Start the clock. According to Oxford Economics, there's three reasons behind what they're calling the robot surge of the manufacturing sector. Reason number one is money. We're at the point where robots are becoming cheaper than humans. According to the report, there is a steady rise in labor costs, while the average unit price of a robot has decreased by 11% between 2011 and 2016. The second reason is that robots are becoming better and more capable at a fast pace. As we mentioned before, advanced AI can teach itself, which makes it very versatile when it comes to taking on different tasks. And reason number three is demand. There's a higher demand for manufactured goods, which means that manufacturing companies, particularly in countries like China, will probably make even more use of AI-powered robots. The report states that by 2030, China will have close to 8 million industrial robots in use if they continue to invest in robotization. So, are we all doomed? No. There are some of us out there who may be safe from AI domination, and even some of us who will benefit from new job openings stemming from AI development. According to Taiwanese American computer scientist and former SGI, Microsoft, and Google exec, yeah, we know, Kai Fu Li, 50% of human jobs will be replaced by AI and automation in the next 15 years. However, Lee believes there are some things that AI cannot do. One of the things is creativity and complexity. AI machines can only work with what is fed to them and learn from what is given to them. They cannot, however, recall emotional memories that trigger a pang of inspiration that will then drive someone to write a novel. This is why Lee points out that fiction writers are safe from getting the boot, as AI can at the most generate structured texts, but not a complicated plot about, for example, a young wizard going through the aches and pains of growing while also trying to fight off an evil magic man. Jobs that require deep human interaction are also safe in Lee's book. Psychiatrists, physical therapists, and people in healthcare don't have to worry about the robot invasion. So far, AI robots lack the empathy, long-term relationship building, and the physical ability to carry out these jobs. Yet. Likewise, jobs in teaching, management, and specifically criminal law defense require the humanity that, well, only humans can bring. Teaching requires deep understanding of the student's needs and competence, something that an algorithm can't get as well as a human would. Management positions require humans with strong leadership and interpersonal skills. Again, something AI has not yet figured out. 
Legal representatives, particularly those in criminal law, need to have strong persuasive skills, meaning it's not just about getting the facts right, but about convincing other humans of an individual's innocence or guilt. Something that is not easily programmed into a computer. Your Honor, it is enough! The defense rests. A mini explore fact here. If you want to figure out whether or not you'll be competing with an AI for a job, there's an actual website that tells you just that. WillRobotsTakeMyJob.com Yes, that's what it's called. Their website uses info from a report published in 2013 called The Future of Employment, How Susceptible Are Jobs to Computerization, to estimate what the job market will look like considering the exponential growth of AI. So go take a look. Or don't. Whatever brings you peace of mind. But it's not all doom and gloom. As the AI industry grows, so will the need for humans who can work with them, creating new jobs in a new sector. According to an article posted in MIT Sloan Management Review, AI will need what they call human trainers, explainers, and sustainers. As the name suggests, human trainers would be in charge of programming AI that is more accurate and that would imitate human behavior more precisely. Explainers are humans who would act as a knowledge bridge between AI experts and organizations that are implementing AI systems into their framework. Some of these companies may feel intimidated or a bit wary of leaving a digital system to take over what was once done by humans. That's where explainers come in. They will essentially work as interpreters for AI results and processes, making them more understandable for laypeople. Sustainers would be there to make sure AI processes are running smoothly and fairly. That is, teaching the AI that the human world is not binary. A sustainer would be in charge of giving AI systems cultural and ethical context. These are not jobs that would be replaced, but brand new areas of work that have not been needed before the growth of AI. So if your job seems at high risk of getting replaced according to WillRobotsTakeMyJob.com, Consider starting your training to become a human AI sustainer, explainer, or trainer. We at Explore Mode wonder, wouldn't trainers help AI become more self-aware? Either way, let's move on from the impending workforce domination of AI and on to greener pastures. One thing all of us humans will benefit from the evolution of AI is the strides it is making in healthcare technology. In 2018, Google's AI Venture trained an AI machine learning system to assess cardiovascular risk factors by feeding in data from more than 280,000 patients. Using images from the patient's retina, the AI was able to predict a set of underlying health complications of each patient, such as whether or not the retina belonged to a smoker or a non-smoker. The AI also predicted the patient's age, gender, and blood pressure, all important factors when it comes to the prediction of cardiovascular diseases. It did this by taking a close look at the vessels inside each patient's retina. Technology like this could potentially work as a great complement to human-made predictions. But it's not just humans that can benefit from AI. In fact, AI is protecting wildlife from us. According to an article by the Association of American University, Rangers in Cambodia are partnering with an AI system called Protection Assistant for Wildlife Security, or PAWS. PAWS uses data it is fed with a combination of mathematical modeling and game theory to suggest the best patrol routes for rangers. By best routes, we mean it creates routes that will be hard for poachers to predict, meaning rangers can have the element of surprise on their side while hunting down poachers. PAWS also uses a Spatial Monitoring and Reporting Tool, or SMART. This digital tracking tool helps rangers go through patrol data, which can in turn be used to determine which areas are more at risk of being exploited by poachers. The combination of the SMART and PAWS AI technology could help wildlife conservation efforts immensely in their fight against poachers. So, is AI the beginning of the end for humans? or will it become the key to salvation of life on Earth? The fact is, there are predictions and studies supporting both scenarios. What is certain is that AI is bringing about a change in the world as we know it, and it will do us good to keep up with it, or we may just get left behind. As always, links to all reports and websites cited are in our description, plus some extra material that you may want to check out if you're interested in learning more. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family.
Thanks for watching.